our last class that phenomenology is not confined to her self philosophy it is like it is everywhere in brentano also and in later philosophers also early continental philosophy also we can see that phenomenology is widely spread so we cannot just connect husserl to this philosophy of phenomenology but husserl is mostly talked about when we talk about phenomenology because his idea is mostly relevant in today's scenario so last we have seen about like how his philosophy got developed how he led towards the thinking of phenomenological ideas where he got trained in mathematics and he realized that we need rigorous and disciplined way of thinking in vienna he met and attended the lectures of franz brentano where he was highly impressed by his philosophy and science and therefore he decided that he will continue in this field so after that he has published some of the relevant works like philosophy of arithmetic and the first part of logical investigations so that is called as his pre phenomenological phase where he has published this most important work after this as uh, was the arrival of the phenomenological phase where his idea of phenomenology got developed uh, in the last class we have also seen that uh, he was not uh, satisfied with his philosophical work in his uh, first phase because uh, there was a critic coming up in his work that says that his work is mostly related to psychology and then he realized that he is doing some mistakes and therefore he has uh, rectified his mistake in the later on work so let's see his phenomenology phenomenology is a kind of study where we do the studies of phenomena and it is slightly different from what kant has said about the phenomena and nomena phenomena and nomena is totally different but when we talk about husserl phenomena it is different because it is a kind of study of the essence it is not the separation of the kinds but it is the study of the essence so when one is describing the phenomena one is describing all that can be described so when i am describing that what is going on around me i am going to describe everything like moving movement of fan then blinking of light and screen and everything so this all is considered as phenomena so basically it is uh, reconciliation of reality that is already going on and my thought on it like what i think about it and when we go back to the history of philosophy it is an reconciliation it tries to reconcile everything starting from the very ancient period where we have tried to re reconcile matter and spirit and now in husserlian philosophy we are reconciling reality and thought in kant's we have tried to reconcile phenomena and nomena in descartes we have tried to reconcile matter and mind is it so this is about all the reconciliation like how we can compile two different things all together like here you can say see the reconciliation of consciousness and reality so what you understood by phenomenology it is basically about the thing themselves thing themselves and on this thing themselves you put your thoughts and you talk about reality so here you see the thing is the direct object of consciousness in its purified form so so it is very important because what we call as a thing what is thing thing is the direct object of consciousness which is it in its purified form so phenomenology basically phenomenology is what methodological attempt methodical attempt to reach the phenomena through an investigation of the pure consciousness so this is what we talked about like we have to 
get into the pure consciousness so what is the fundamental concept in hustle philosophy it is that he tried to make it uh, a rigorous science rigorous because he want a, a very methodical thinking in that a kind of clarity in that and that is why it was called as rigorous but we have also seen that rigorous movement in philosophy is not possible because for making it rigorous we have to initiate or imitate some of the principles of empirical sciences which is obviously not possible because empirical sciences means we have to use the facts that are measurable but in philosophy it is not possible because philosophy is not factual it is ideal it is essential and therefore philosophy cannot be made truly scientific in nature and therefore when we talk about the scientific rigor it is not possible and therefore it was shifted from rigorous science towards radicalism where i said that radicalism is a movement where you do critical thinking and analysis which is very well possible in philosophy so no doubt when we are going towards the philosophical radicalism then obviously it is going to be fruitful for us so this is what we talked about now we see the development of husserlian phenomenology so divided into three phases pre phenomenological period then phenomenological period and the post phenomenological period so in the pre phenomenological period i talked about brentano so you have already seen that how brentano's critic of psychology and how his interest in phenomenology has diverted husserlian interest towards scientific psychology as well as philosophy so because of brentano only husserl has started his work on philosophy of arithmetic which was considered as the psychological foundation to the concept of number but here also one problem fred said that his book was psychological a form of psychologism but husserl then thought that his thought was not psychological and therefore he refuted psychologism psychologism is the view that theoretical foundation of maths and logic is what is psychology but here we are not dealing with psychology and therefore husserl has given criticism to psychology okay so this was we did in the last class now phenomenological period so in this period husserl has developed a philosophical maturity he tried to reconcile between the subjective and the objective thought which was well elaborated in his volume 2 of logical investigations where he talked about important question on how the ideal object are given to consciousness that means how an object could be understood in a possible way so that was about the phenomenological period and we have also seen about the concept of intentionality intentionality is what we have seen already in brentano that intentionality is that when we are learning something about something then that is called as intentionality learning about experiences learning about philosophy that means consciousness is always directed towards something it is always always about something and that is called as intentionality right and then what was important so this thing noetic and nomadic noetic is the act and nomadic is the content this was important this this we already seen that according to brentano all psychical phenomena is intentionally contain an object it means all psychical phenomena all the phenomena we see around is mental and all the things we see around is intentional so for him intentionality means directedness of the act of consciousness to some object and very important point this object is not immanent to the consciousness you know that object and consciousness are far apart 
and therefore object is not immanent but object is transcendent so this was we see we have already seen and uh, uh, this hustling intentionality when you go around it is also the consciousness it is also about the consciousness that uh, consciousness is direct directedness to an object like conscious of joyful act desirous of etc then we have seen about the notion of intentionality so this question could come like describe the husserl's notion of intentionality and then you have to write about the intentionality objective acts uh then intentionality identify so we have tried to understand the meaning of it through example and uh, intentionality connects and intentionality constitutes so you can go through this text and understand the example and try to understand what does it mean after that we have tried to understand the meaning of essence so essence is something which is very relevant in the history of phenomenology because essence is not a fact essence is not something that you can perceive observe experience it is reality it is a part of an object without which an object would not be there so this is the knowledge of the essence that husserl talks about and uh, for understanding the knowledge of the essence he has led us towards the step to step procedures where he talked about the ordinary experiences and the transcendental experiences transcendental experience is also called intuition so these two experiences are very important ordinary and the transcendent because in transcendent experience we get the knowledge of intuition and in the transcendental experience only one has to bracket all reference to existence in ordinary experience you are putting your ex existence in the knowledge of understanding but in the transcendental experience you have to put a bracket on your existence that means you have to avoid your existence and you have to go above existence when you are going above existence then that is called as transcendent the meaning of transcendent very clear that something that is beyond existence so in transcendent what you have to do you have to bracket your existence but in ordinary experience your existence is with you so that is uh, what uh, the essence talks about all right now let's talk about this eidetic reduction so when we have to grasp the essence that means when we have to understand the meaning of essence there are two aspects of it one is positive and the other is negative so when we are talking about the eidetic reduction it is the positive aspect it means that you have to like penetrate into the purified essential residue gradually revealing the pure subjectivity that means slowly you have to reach at the essence of it so when hasel has talked about eidetic reduction he has said that reduction are complementary to each other like eidetic reduction and transcendental reduction are complementary eidetic is distinction between fact and essence so you are going to separate the fact out of essence slowly when you start separating the fact you will reach towards the essence and this is a positive reduction and that is called as eidetic reduction and the transcendental reduction is the distinction between the real and the non real so what you are going to do here you are going to separate the real thing from the non real thing so you know that essence are the pure nom nometa of pure consciousness which is real when we are talking about the fact or when we are talking about the unreal or the non real thing it has to be reduced to reach towards the essence so uh, to consider it in a very simple way you have to just uh, go on reducing 
an object fr from its outer covering. When you remove the outer covering, that means when you remove the fact, you will reach towards the essence of it. And that is called as the edetic reduction. So this is a positive form of reduction. Under this, there are two types of reduction. One is, uh, one is edetic and second is transcendental, which is both complementary. In edetic, you have fact and essence. In transcendental, you have real and the non-real. So like this, you can remember all these things. So the purpose is just to reach at the pure form. The purest form is the essence in the terms of phenomenology. So purest form of consciousness is called as essence. Okay. Now the second one. Second one is very important that is called bracketing. So before uh, this, before coming to bracketing, we were talking about bracketing the existence to reach the transcendental state. So that is quite possible when we understand the idea of bracketing that is epoch. So bracketing is the negative aspect because you are not removing anything but you are just suspending that point of view. That means you are just keeping it in bracket to refer it in your later aspect. So just remember it when we talk about edetic reduction you just have to go on eliminating the outer coverings to reach towards the essence but when we are talking about the bracketing you have to put the factual information inside the bracket so you have seen that in a long paragraphs there are some of the unnecessary phrases that are kept inside the bracket that means you can refer to it or you cannot refer to it it doesn't matter the same thing is given here that some of the ideas that are not relevant you can keep it in bracket so uh, this things could be very important when uh, you are solving any problem so in any problem like in uh, when we solve the mathematical problem when the situations are described the situation doesn't matter what matters is how you are going to solve the problem so you keep the situation that this thing happened, then he has arrived, then I talk to him. All these things you have to keep in bracket and you have to reach towards the problem. So this is how you can solve the problem. And that is why bracketing is very important. In maths you have seen that how we keep some of the unrelevant things inside the bracket. So that we can use it for the later purpose. And that is what bracketing is all about. So this two ideas, that is bracketing and Edetic reduction is very important to reach towards the essence of pure consciousness. After this, we have reached to the period of pure phenomenology. So Husserl has continued his philosophical thinking and reflection. Now he has landed up into the transcendental phenomenology that is the pure phenomenology, which is very pure. The subject form is pure and the pure phenomena are reached by means of the pure consciousness. So it is basically the transcendental philosophy, a very purest form of philosophy where you are moving towards consciousness. So you are suspending all the assertion about reality and you are just talking about the consciousness and that is described as the pure phenomenology. So what is his intention? His intention was to achieve phenomena in its pure and indubitable form and for this he bracketed all accidental and incidental aspects all the judgments and interpretations of reality so phenomenology when we see in overall aspect it fulfills the need of a scientific philosophy with ultimate clarity in basic insights and systematic order in building up on them so this is the foundation of all science and therefore Husserlian calls it as a first philosophy. So what he is doing? He is moving towards the subjective and therefore his critic has labeled him as an idealist. So we have seen subjective idealism of Berkeley before but his philosophy is not like the subjective idealism of Berkeley. It is totally different because we know what we are doing. We are reaching towards the pure consciousness. So this was it.
and uh, so here you can see its philosophy is idealism because it is a search into the eidos eidos means essence and meaning and we have landed up on, uh, up to words of pure phenomenology that is about the transcendental idealism which is about the real world which is reduced to pure and the transcendental so all these terms may sound complicated to you but uh, just uh, make it sure that you are understanding the main main points like bracketing what is bracketing it is negative aspect of reaching towards the essence then what is eidetic reduction it is the positive aspect of reaching towards the consciousness and when you reach towards the consciousness and when you started studying studying the consciousness then that is called as a pure pure phenomenology so his thinking goes on goes on and his reflection kept on continuing when he reached towards the subjective point of view subjective consciousness so this was all about uh, the husserl's movement where he has uh, talked about his ideas of phenomenology now let's see the concept of life world that is the last part of this chapter so what is this life world means life world is something which is a world of our immediate experiences in our everyday life that means a concrete experience so scientists conceive the world as our world scientists are trying to explain the reason for the existence of the world and what we are not able to reach towards is subjective phenomena because we are objectively analyzing and observing all the things and we are missing the subjective uh, subjective fact of a phenomena so whenever we see an object we try to see it from a one perspective like we see the colors and we try to find out the practical meaning and science as we have seen that he, it is all covering the objective elements it is trying to concealing the subjectivity so where we are lagging behind we are lagging behind in the studies of the subjective and the practical aspect of the world and therefore the concept of life world comes into the play where we try to analyze the experiencing of the self at its center like what the self is experiencing how our self is going through different things that is happening around so this phenomenological study is reflection on time this is about the inner consciousness of the time because no we know that with time our our analysis also changes our impressions also changes the present is not the present because it will turn into the past and the past we know that it is no never going to come come back so this immediate retention of the past immediate understanding analysis observation all this thing could be done by the studies of the life world so this is what husserl talks about and he says that if the other subjects are to be meaningful they are to be constituted that means if we want to find out the meaningfulness of anything then we have to take it into consideration but we know that it is not going to possible because uh, if it is subjective then there is the problem because in subjective there is the consideration of our own self but if it is objective there is the constitution of the another self but we have always seen that this problem remains unsolved in everyone's work even in his published work so uh, what we have to just understand is that his life world philosophy is very important when we have to understand the subjective point of view about the world that that is what is important and later on he has uh, given his thought about god because he was uh, uh, he wanted to start his philosophy without any presupposition and therefore he has uh, he was not into uh, like studying god and everything he has kept the philosophy of god outside his philosophy and he is mostly 
he has put his interest on intentional experience subjectivity and objectivity so to sum up his foundation was his foundation of his uh, philosophy was mathematics which uh, goes around towards the development of phenomenological method and the conclusion is towards the idealism so i hope so this much is quite clear and here is some of the term like intentionality that is the necessary connection between the subjective and the object subjective act and the objective content so we have seen what is the subjective act that is the noises then objective content is the noema epoch is a bracketing of the non essential to arrive at the pure essence then eidetic reduction that means the direct intuition of the essence and transcendental that is the purified from the ordinary and something that is contingent so these are the further readings that you can go through